I'm going to start with a poem called Old Florida. Students, pay attention. The story of this poem is coming to a theater near you in the future. <laughs> Old Florida. When the soon-to-be-famous hurricane hurried to their neighborhood, I begged them to leave. Rain made a cassoulet of the parking lot. Winds juggled giant palm trees like rolling pins. But they hunkered down. Children under desks in the 50s. The storm, their personal blitz. I cried, I screamed over the phone, but they rejected the generator-backed shelter I found. Chose canned goods and bunker. And I consigned chose canned goods and bunker until the phone died. And I consigned them to their neighbors, their luck, and their blood thinners. <laughs> 89 years old, they hid out on the ninth floor. Elevator out, infrastructure crumbling, but more than death or thirst, they feared their daughter with her talk of evacuation. Leaving home, even for natural disaster, made them refugees. Registrants in a vast and subtly documented conspiracy to remove them from their apartment to assisted living. <laughs> Neighbors found them sweating in their foxhole, delivered salami and crackers and ice. And when the power came back, they phoned me to report that hardship brought out the kindness in people. Wasn't it fortunate they stayed in their home? And where was my faith in human goodness? And I'll read one more and then I'll take questions or comments. This poem is called The Children's Concert. Once a month when I was 12 and my sister was 10, our mother would drop us at the Philadelphia Academy of Music for the Saturday children's concerts. We'd sit in the enormous dark hall with the other children and I'd whisper to my sister that our mother was never coming back. <laughs> that she'd abandoned us there. <laughs> that she was driving to meet our father and take a plane to Europe. <laughs> My sister called me a liar and her eyes filled with tears. The musicians had started on Mozart, but I was whispering about how we would feel when all the other kids had gone home and we were left standing in our navy blue winter coats on that grim Philadelphia street. I did not know then that I would grow to love the 18th century, that my sister would take her own life one winter day in Philadelphia, that childhood would be so final a thing. So we're going to start with those two poems and I'm just going to ask for comments or observations or anything uh, from anybody in the audience. And as always we have Chris on this side with a microphone and I'm over here so raise Good. your hand and we'll just go back and forth between the different sides of the room. So if anybody is shy I'm going to call on people. <laughs> the ones I know. There we okay. go. We'll start over here. Uh, now, you commented on childhood as a final thing, but it sounds like you're still carrying it with you, and you're still uh, thinking about it as you go on through life, so that, I mean, it sounds kind of contradictory. That's where memory comes in. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Matt raises a very important point. You know, I had a friend in graduate school who said to me once, if somebody shut her up into a room, she would have enough material to write for the rest of her life. <laughs> And I thought, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way at all. She thought that her childhood had so much material that she could spend the rest of her life mining it for stories. 
And you're absolutely right that in fact, uh, the, speaker, the speaker believes her childhood ended, but her memory of it and her recapitulating and rethinking its significance goes on forever. That's a very good observation. 